this violet flame, and watch it in its power, in its potency. Wonder about it. And it radiates to you. If you were standing near a fire, like a campfire or a bonfire, and you feel the radiation of the heat, and what you feel radiating toward you of the violet flame is care, is comfort, is validation for here. As we said, you are the only one who could fill this spot. Beyond welcomed, you are anticipated and you are required. And the violet flame, the radiation, the illumination that you feel as you gaze into it, as you feel into it, gives you that attuning. everyone, welcome to the Charmed Life Podcast. My name is Trisha Carr and I am your host. And in this episode, I'm going to share with you some excerpts from classes that I'm holding, workshops that I'm holding in my Mystic Arts Academy, where we meet twice monthly for workshops. We meet two, one to three times usually every month for live group meditations and hypno journeys that I'm leading, where you get downloads of those produced meditations and hypnotic journeys. Check the link if you want to check us out. You can drop in for a workshop or you can subscribe and then be a part of the community. And it's a really, really great place where we're growing and shining together. And it's very experimental and explorative. These excerpts are from my series on the crystalline elements, the holy flames and crystalline elements. Holy flame is actually one of the crystalline elements. If you've heard of the violet flame before, the healing of the violet flame, it's in that vein. So I'm doing a whole series on it. Most of this is brand new channeled information that I'm bringing through. We're working through the specific qualities of different holy flames and crystalline elements. So I'll let you just go ahead and watch some of these excerpts because I think there's some information in there and I hope you enjoy it. Let's talk about holy flames and crystalline elements. The crystalline element particularly is something I haven't heard in specific anywhere else. It's not to say that it doesn't exist somewhere else, um, but just to, uh, I, I kind of say that kind of stuff so as to take the full blame if I'm a little bit not very articulate and also in case it's happening simultaneously for someone else to let you know that I'm not in intentionally not attributing. I haven't actually learned that information yet. But let's talk first about just a little bit of the overview of the terms. The idea for this workshop, this class, is to give an overview of holy flames or the crystalline elements, the set of crystalline elements in a general sense, and to also provide attunement and activation. That really works as a remembering and to activate in all of us something that's very natural for us because anything that's spiritual is natural. So let's talk about terms first. Holy flame. And the holy flames is in the set of crystalline elements. It's the fire element of crystalline elements. Kind of set it apart because it's a bit well known, particularly with the violet flame. And it does almost have a, I, I don't want to say a higher function, or um, maybe it is. Maybe it has something to do with that spark of creation. It really draws in the ray quality of it. And so when we're working with holy flames, we are we are working in the same vein of the rays. This overlaps a little bit into subtle bodies. These are the uh, refractions or the fractal parts of the one light or the one energy, which is, you know, God energy, creator energy. And these are the refractions of it. It's a part of the one light and a concentration of a particular energy. And you know what? That's what the archangels are too. They are really just a sort of articulation of a somewhat specific aspect of God. And, and that's just how it will like your hand. This is one hand and there are five fingers and they have sort of different specialties, but they really still are my hand and they still are my body in a, you know, in that collective sense that all of that is to set up what holy even means the word holy. Let's take it back from religion. Shall we? <laughs> I mean, religion can use it too. But it's one of those words, and I think in the English language that I know myself 
had been very much associated with religion. And the context that I heard it used in religion so much was really judgmental. And that's that's me, that, but that's the connotation I usually heard the word holy in. I heard it in the sense of something is holy and something is not holy. And that the right, it's almost like righteous and, and unrighteous. And so it was used with judgment a lot, elevating some people as a way to diminish others and sin and all that stuff. Well, let's just scrub it of that. That's not useful to our talk. And that's not useful to our information. The word holy, the way we are understanding it and and, um, utilizing it in our semantical sense, think of the word holistic. And that word holistic, it's, it comes from the concept of holism and that's spelled H O L I S M. And what holistic holism, what this concept is, it is referring to how the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And that's kind of like where two or more are gathered there. God is in their midst. So when we come together, I come in love, you come in love, we love one another. And then there's exponentially more love than even the two of us brought to it. It's not just love times two, it's love times a million because then the bonding and the presence of of that creator energy among us makes it exponential. And so that's what this idea of holy is, is that it's great, something that is greater than the sum of its parts. It is a divine spark. It is a divine explosion even. Honestly, like the word divine, I had to kind of take back a little bit too. It wasn't used a ton in my experience of religion, but it just, it just kind of, to me, was associated with, um, you know, religion. And so divine is a word that I took back, but divinity, it is the God frequency or the creator frequency. I also had to take back the word God because (laughs) it was used in the church in a way that was judgmental. Anyway, I digress. This is the purpose of the word holy. And then a classic sense of the word, a classic definition of the word holy, if we can kind of extract any of the judgment or dogma from it, it means to be in service to God. And we can put another word in there for God, in service to source energy, in alignment with it, even the activity. And so healing, right? And creating to be spiritually pure or energetically pure, different ways we can look at this, ways, different terms that we are comfortable with. And just the pivot of it gives us a different lens, a purer perspective or a more whole perspective, holistic perspective. This is what we mean. This is the what we're calling forth by using the word holy. The flame in spirituality is aligned with spirit in Christianity, there is the term Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is sort of like the emotion of God or even the movement or the action of God. It is the presence and the atmosphere of God. But it's it's also the Holy Spirit is what can instantly change. And so that's this is the concept of holy flames. It is like the it is evoking and utilizing a refraction of the Holy Spirit and the concept of it being a flame or being the fire element has to do with the passion, the power and the capacity for fire. If we're talking about the physical element to completely dematerialize something so that it has a brand new fertile purpose, it can just purify. I mean, water we think of as purifying, right? It's cleansing. Fire is even more powerfully purifying. So invoking and utilizing holy flames, when we when we bring that into a system, a person, and whatever it is we are bringing it into or putting something into it, it is dematerializing. It is purifying anything that is impure or anything that is not in alignment. So it is highly, highly potent. Fire equals potency. Water is cleansing, right? And air is uplifting and it can also blow away and it can be strong and powerful. And the earth is a womb and it's um, it's a beauty and it can also transmute and it can compress and, and nourish. Fire equals potency. And so this is what holy flames are all about. 
the sum are greater than their parts because it is the God frequency, potency, Holy Spirit, potent. Okay, so we're going to break it down in the different rays, the different rays or the different colors of, of flames. We're going to do concentrations in it. So next we're going to do violet flame in the next workshop because it is the most well-known and but we're also, the one after that, I think the one next in order is going to be the, the turquoise aqua flame. I have, I channeled them all out. And the reason why the turquoise aqua flame would be next is because it's one that I have been, it's been like, it, it's almost like the one that ministered this information to me because I was working with a violet flame as we all are. But when this turquoise flame and turquoise elements started to come into my work so much. I'm like, okay, there's what's going on here. And so it was kind of the one that was a catalyst to understand for me to understand beyond the violet flame, that there is a whole pantheon of refractions of the, the Holy spirit flames to work with. I've worked with in, in, with clients in, in sessions where just, I, I didn't even explain to them what we were doing. We're just deep in the session and it's, you know, they're, they're in the state and we're working in a hypnotic state and energy healing and everything. And I'll, I'll say, and now there's now a holy fame flame is present for you. And, and I'll have them describe it and they will describe, you know, sometimes someone will just say like, Oh, it's, yeah, violet flame, you know, cause that's what is right for them but a client's not ever having heard anything like this. They're like, well, yeah, it had, it was pink and silver and golden. You know what I mean? Like it had all of these different qualities in it. And so it's like, again, something that is spiritual to us is also very natural to us. So I found clients for it to be very natural for them to just have a, a, a flame. So this is why, like I said, we're going to go into the different, we're going to concentrate because you can work with holy combinations of the different flame components. So you may work with the concentration of the turquoise or aqua flame or element, but then another time you might work with a flame that is violet and turquoise and maybe amber or whatever, you know what I mean? Like allowing it to show up for you and then just understanding what those qualities can, or you can call them in from the understanding of how they work and apply them in the way that I would say, okay, I have a scrape, so I should clean it with alcohol. I know alcohol is the healing agent for this, you know, so you can work either way, either intuitively let it show up for you or intelligently apply what you know about it. And let's talk about the violet flame and the mystic violet elements. Crystalline elements refers to the whole set of the holy elements. Uh, fire is that really potent element that we're working with, the crystalline element of fire. But we also work with um, air, water, and earth. And the word crystalline is referring to a, the, uh, the process that is in very a very dynamic part of the creative process, the creation process, I should say. So it is, in a sense, you might think of it as before creation, before something becomes material, but it's actually a part of that as well. So it's actually omnidimensional, the crystalline experience, the crystalline frequency. And but crystalline, it refers to crystallization in the way that energy, thoughts, spirit will pattern and collapse so that they become crystallized and then they will become material. But like I say, the frequency of crystal crystallization is kind of like the Christ consciousness frequency or the Christhood path. As we've talked about in other classes, how the Christhood path, Christhood means spirit becoming human and human ascending to spirit. It's this cycle and the crystalline process is, is, is that as well. You may have heard about the crystalline grid of the earth. And this is the energy of the soul calling into the soul of Gaia, who sends her elements to co-create by the signal of the soul energy or the source energy. And, and then that is mapped and encoded in a grid, literally inside the earth. But it's also like the field around the earth. And it's, it's said that you can actually see this from space. You can see a grid. And so the crystalline grid of the earth is, is a recording um, 
matrix and it does have it's so in a way it's like the akashic records that have to do with the earth but it's also just the process and the relationship of co-creating uh source co-creating with gaia and us in that process as well so this is what the word crystalline is referring to it's referring to the component of the elemental expressions the spiritual elements and we, uh, we, the way that we know them as above, so below, they have a same, the similar characteristics as our, our uh, divine physical elements. And we're talking about it, basically the soul of these physical elements, the source perspective of these physical elements. The violet flame and the mystic elements. Saint Germain is the, well, I don't really particularly love this word, but the Lord or the overseer, the overseer of the age of Aquarius, which is what we are in now. And that's, it's, it's always been a debate as to when that exactly starts, but we're, we're in the age of Aquarius. We've just moved from the Piscean age and Jesus Christ was the overseer, was the Lord of the Piscean age. And we are in the transition still, but in the Aquarius age. Uh, a lot of his themes are magic, transformation, transmutation, because he understood like the reason we are here, one of the reasons we are here is just to change energy from one form to another. I mean, we're changing spirit into human, you know, that's the Christhood. That's the, you know, Christ consciousness path is to to be able to move energy from one form to another and understand both our uh, our our co-creative identity in that and then also the you know the sovereignty that we really hold by our identity with the one energy with the source energy or if you like the word god um when we call when we say i am that i am that i am that is really calling on the name of god your essence of god energy you as creator and so that's what we're here to rediscover and that's what we're here to um expand so that we can offer that into the universe into the plane of creation and beyond so that's what that's where we are with who saint germain is and uh he's really saying to me right now that it's really important for us to he really wants us to align with the concept the idea the personality or the the master personality of saint germain wants to align with the frequency of freedom there's freedom in knowing that you are empowered to be one with creator that you're both empowered to be autonomous and one with creator and that you are a, a part of the body of the infinite creator and you are doing the the all that you do as an inextricable component of the one infinite creator and then you are like the finger of source energy doing the expansion in the universe and while it may seem like you're doing it on your own at times that's a really cool magic trick if you want to talk about magic in fact you are doing it in perfect alignment and you can't actually go off your path because when you go off your path when you come back you bring new understanding and so this is what the mystic elements are about that saint germain is going to give us the uh, the counsel on is mysteries revealed so when something is a mystery we it's just there for us and jesus said knock and the door it, the door will be opened and so when there is a mystery it's only because we've hidden it away from ourselves in this perspective so that we can have that wonderful expansion but nothing is ever truly a mystery mysteries are only a dance in the divine creation experience and um, so this is saint germain and he's associated with you know the violet flame as is archangel zadkiel and these two um are are very much aligned with one another they both are associated with the violet flame which is the flame of transmutation healing and um has a a lot to really anything that you cast into the violet flame it can take deeply sorrowful and dense material meaning like mental emotional and even physical material and transmute it into have ha, being, being the most wonderful contribution to yourself and the and the, the whole universe and so it it can take really dense um pain even and transmute it into this is exactly aligned um the violet flame is also it really just activates purpose activates uh if you think the color, okay, so when we're, sorry, there's, they're cha I'm channeling and it's like I'm, I'm getting stamps. Let me slow down a little bit. Can you give me, help me to get my body on track with it? 
okay, great. So they tell me to talk about the the concept of the reason we talk about flame first, and then we'll also talk about the other spiritual elements. The element of fire, the spiritual element of fire is potent and it, it uh, breaks down, it dematerializes, and then leaves a fertile soil for rematerialization for the process of creation again. And so this is happening in the mental, emotional, the spiritual planes when we are working with these with these flames and when we're working with these crystalline elements. And so in each of these classes, like this one is about violet, we're working with the violet ray, violet light. And Zadkiel and St. Germain oversee the violet ray and therefore the violet flame. So when we're working with the spiritual elements like the violet flame, we're working with the creation process and flame, the, the uh, spiritual element of fire is the most potent of the elements in this kind of work, in the work of healing and transmutation. And whereas water, the spiritual element of water is soothing and purifying. And we talked about that in the last class. So what the rays themselves and how they then work with the particular expression of the element that's what we're that's what the interplay is here saint germain coined these elements the elements of mysteries revealed and saying taking from the ask and it shall be given knock and the door will be opened it's that which is behind the door and he reminds us that we put it behind the door ourselves because we are one with the identity of infinite creator, of prime creator. We are one with that energy. And so we can be excited when we have what we think are mysteries. And these elements, when we work with the violet elements, the mystic violet elements, this word mystic also has to do with mysteries and, and poet, poetic um, discovery to hide and reveal something at once in poetry. You know, does that, uh, this is something you're telling me right now. When you write a poem, you are putting the message in there in a way that is um, artistic and beautiful and evocative of the powers of the being, of the beauty of the being. And it is both revealed and it is hidden because it isn't overly defined because then the poem will be received by the listener, by the reader, and then they will reveal their own mystery by that particular art. This is what these, this is what the violet elements offer to us. When we work with them, it is a process of revealing the true purpose. It is a process of taking something that may be pain and sorrow, or something that may be confusion and static and discomfort and discord, and allowing them to actually reveal the fact that they are just as they are meant to be all the while. It is just the unfolding, it is just the poem moving from its denouement to its conclusion and its, uh, you know, its apex, its um, climax. What, it, what the violet flame will illumine for us, they want to point out how the crown chakra which is the seventh personal chakra right at the top of the head here. And the crown chakra is actually, um, in a sense, it's stationary, not that it doesn't move, but what it, what it is, is it doesn't really open and close as we tend to think of it, that um, really what the crown chakra is doing is it does receive and it does also release, but it is always the sum total of the whole frequency of the being. The crown chakra is, is like a thermometer or a barometer, and that's what it will be showing uh, all the time. And so that's what the, that's what the violet ray does. Is that it is it is the all of the rays that are subset within it, because if you think about a rainbow, violet is the last one, right? We go red, orange, right? Yeah, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, then violet, and so it is encompassing and it is uh, drawing in all of these other rays. Now we have higher frequency rays than that, and we have inner frequency rays. But when we're talking about the, these dimensions and these densities, the violet ray works on very, very um, much that ascension energy. So 
Zadkiel, Archangel Zadkiel, and Saint Germain work in ascension energies. Violet flame is about ascension energies, about the all that we are experiencing being able to be utilized as resource, as nourishment for ascension. And so it can be a very powerful experience to transmute instantaneously, where we don't have to do a ton of uh, lengthy shadow work even, because it can happen instantaneously, like taking um, like taking a, a supplement, you know, and getting a, a, a vitamin B shot. You could just let the violet flame do its work. In order to work with the violet flame, we do want to use our imaginal senses. And these imaginal senses are when we shift to the inner world. As we shift into the inner world, we're actually taking a portal to the entire universe. We are moving into the essence of soul. And we're moving into the essence where the mysteries are revealed and the mystic is writing the poem of creation. And so if you want to visualize or use your inner senses, for these senses are your high frequency senses. And however it works for you as a, a visual sense, the inner, the inner sight, or just a knowing or a sensing. Have a knowing or a visualization that you have been lifted and you have traveled and you have moved to a plane of high frequency spiritual activity. You've moved to a vantage point where you do co-create with the archangels, with masters and ancestors. And here on this plane, your heart travels you there, it carries you there. And you are placed in the just right spot. For it is only the spot that you can occupy, only you can occupy this place on this plane. And it may be as decorated or simple at any particular time. It may seem to you like you are on a star or a moon or a planet or perhaps just suspended in a beautiful energetic reality, a quantum omnidimensional reality. And here, if you want to just give yourself a plane to stand upon. And if you will have a knowing that there is a blazing crystalline flame. And when we say crystalline, this is not a flame that harms. It is a flame that only does heal. It only activates. It purifies in the way that is release, relief, and blessing. And as you have a sense or even make a choice to design this violet flame and watch it in its power, in its potency, wonder about it. And it radiates to you. If you were standing near a fire, like a campfire or a bonfire, and you feel the radiation of the heat and what you feel radiating toward you of the violet flame is care, is comfort, is validation for here. As we said, you are the only one who could fill this spot. Beyond welcomed, you are anticipated and you are required. And the violet flame, the radiation, the illumination that you feel as you gaze into it, as you feel into it, gives you that attuning. And I wonder what colors or qualities of light would be in the violet flame that you are witnessing here. Do you see other qualities of light? Do you see brilliance of platinum or any other colors for as we continue to move in this series, we will find that these rays work in combinations together. And for now, we're allowing the violet flame to attune and communicate. And it says, I work with you. You are the completion of the universe. 
You are the I am within the I am. And as you continue to elect the attuning energy, the, uh, the illumination and radiation of this healing, powerful transmutation and a flame that sets right. There are three different ways that you can work with this mystery to be revealed. And if you might notice that there is something, a burden, a pain, a, a question even, it can be as heavy or as moderate as, as any human curiosity or, or difficulty could ever imagine to be. And if it's coming from your heart, just as if you hold it in your hand, it comes right out of your heart. And this is a mystery that you hold in your hand. And as we spend time just recognizing there is a mystery in my hand, allowing the anticipation of it being revealed, of it being transformed. If you had a caterpillar any moment now, it will be a butterfly. It will be completely a new and spectacular manifestation. And it is a divine alignment. It was always going to be this, and yet it was never going to be this. Because only you and your participation as a co-creator can make the universe complete. And as you hold this mystery in your hand, you have the option to toss it into the violet flame. You have the option to walk it into the violet flame, to receive a full transmutation to every part and parcel, every spiritual DNA activated within your body, your crystalline body, your subtle bodies, renewing your mind, renewing your emotions, renewing your spirit. And the other option that you have is to stand in this circle with all who are in attendance here, as well as all of the masters, angels, and guides, and beings of light that would be here in your plane. And as you are holding the mystery in your hand, then we may summon the flame to cover us all together and so that we together will have the mysteries revealed. And even if it is just your mystery that we all stand here together to have transmuted by the violet flame, we all deeply benefit. This deep benefit means that we ascend. And as you release with complete peace, and yet, anticipation. And the violet flame transmutes it and we all receive it together. And we feel the lightning in the heart. We feel the activation in the heart. And over us now is Archangel Zadkiel saying, I am your constant companion. I am ever covering you with my arm. I'm holding you in my heart and I'm holding you in my hand saying this is a delicate and beautiful mystery that is revealing to the universe at all times. And with so much gratitude, I watch you and I coax you to become the butterfly. I delight and we, all of your helpers and guides of spirit, delight in the beauty of your creation, we stand in awe. And may this violet flame be known as the potent, powerful, prime creator flame of awe, of awesomeness. And with so many blessings, we invite you to be fearless. Beyond fearless, we invite you to be deeply curious and find the mysteries that are in your field, in your heart, in your mind, in this world that you co-create with your brothers and sisters. And we invite you to be very empowered. And if any time you feel as though you are weak, we say that is okay. It is just an opportunity for you to recognize how much we are supporting you. We love you so dearly. And we are so excited and so impressed with the mysteries that you unfold.